these are the highlights of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. Welcome to TRS Clips. Make sure you hit that bell icon and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, again, I'm a huge Graham Hancock fan. Who's uh, I'm sure you're familiar. Yes, yes. Considering the amount you read, <laughs> so Graham Hancock uh, talks a lot about how the ancient Amazonian culture was way more scientifically advanced than us. Right. So the argument that people usually throw at him is, if they were that advanced, where is the plastic? Yes. <laughs> But what if that culture was so advanced that they realize the bad outcomes of plastic exactly. that it harms the earth, and they exactly. decided not to even make it. Right. But instead, they made other things like a super uh, soil. Which is capable of growing any plant uh-huh. anywhere in the world. Which is there's actual records of the soil. The soil is found even today in those local tribal cultures. Right. Then obviously all the architecture you see, the pyramids which are hidden in the Amazon. Right. Ah, uh, and the botany, the botanical sciences yes. that they discovered. Yes. Um, you know, maybe they work towards creating a very positive form of human exactly. life rather than exactly. just oh let's create weapons and let's create plastic. In fact, that reminds me, you know, of a of a <laughs> sort of a debate I had with another author. in a lit fest and uh, where i was saying that you know people were they there were these scientific advances and he said they they fought on chariots mm. how could they be scientifically advanced and immediately the thought that came to my mind was this because we have fossil fuel does not mean we are advanced right mm. fossil fuel is causing so much damage to the environment mm. even if they were not aware of the fossil fuel does not make them primitive yeah you know they were using the technology which was in line with their environment mm. and indian civilization has always been about having a balance and equilibrium with their environment it's not just you know philosophically if you go to the upanishads there's the balance between the inside and the outside world and it it is between the atman and the brahman and the prakriti around you so that beautiful equilibrium was maintained using a chariot yeah. which will not happen using a jet yeah. uh, today you know which is guzzling fossil fuels and throwing so much of carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere so i mean people when they start using you know this they, they judge the ancient civilizations using 21st century glasses that's something which again as i started you know you have to have an open mind you cannot judge things based on your present perspective you know you have to look at the bigger picture and just because they did not have cars or fossil fuels does not mean they did not have technology yeah. there is mention of vimans like yeah. you said you know vimans and not just one pushpak viman is a one that everybody knows there are other multiple vimans that are mentioned mm. you know in fact pushpak viman was not with ravan it was with his step brother kubera it's where and kubera was a ruler of lanka a lot of people again don't know this story you know so ravan actually usurped the throne he threw kubera out of lanka he took his pushpak viman and he basically took over everything that kubera had built and kubera was saved using two other flying machines you know and this is from the uttarakhand of the valmiki ramayan there were two other machines two other spaceships or airplanes whatever you want to call them uh, that were used to take kubera away from there uh, his minions uh, yakshas they basically helped him escape from there mm. to the himalayas mm. there is uh, such flying machines mentioned in the mahabharat so there is this king called shalva who attacks dwarka in a flying machine mm. and again so a lot of people have this question how could they create something like this and you know the answer that i have is that they did not create it they were given the knowledge to create this by an advanced civilization again possibly aliens mm. who were the devas mm. so these people the ancient the advanced civilization of devas they provided the knowledge to create this because whenever you find mention of vimans it's never a human that's creating it the pushpak viman was created by vishwakarma who is the architect of the gods the uh, plane that the shalva uses in mahabharat was created by maya danav mm. who is the architect of the asuras mm. so these are two other advanced civilizations who provided these machines to us for use mm. you know it's like an advanced ca- country you know a western country providing arms and weapons and artillery to a third world country yeah, yeah. it's the same thing yeah. you know and uh, this talk about vimans got me thinking that okay can you actually build a plane without fossil fuels and then you think of birds <laughs> right like yeah. how do birds fly yeah. they basically have a certain kind of bone structure right and a certain kind of material that makes them up which are the feathers which right. probably hold air which is aerodynamically yeah. yeah and just because the planes that we use in the modern day use fossil fuel it yeah. probably means that yeah there were definitely scientific advancements uh 
with respect to those planes right or maybe no one just took a step back and thought hmm, let's engineer them this other way yes um uh, and you said different kinds of imans that's basically yes. what it is some would have been flown using fossil fuels some would have Possibly. been flown using some other kind of engineering right there's no limit to what engineering can achieve and that's one thing i've learned as an engineer yeah. that we are the again who thought 50 years back that you know we'd be able to do so much with our phones completely so what stops you from thinking that maybe someone will engineer planes some at some point in the future yes. which are completely independent of fossil in fuels. fact these vimans uh, were supposed to have a mercury vortex so they were supposed to run on mercury so imagine mercury is a uh, it, it's not a very easily available mm. metal and now it, now and it, it, it also has a very um, uh you know semi fluid uh, uh, uh texture right so so how did they use it that's the challenge to mm. uncover mm. and somebody can try it because these there are people who have tested the models that are given so there's mm. something called the vemanika shastra which mentions the different type of planes the different shapes mm. and some people especially in the western countries they have tried building those shapes small ones mm. and testing whether they are even aerodynamically stable whether mm. they can even sustain the wind currents and can fly in the mm. air and it's possible mm. but they haven't found the uh, technology to uh, you know um, decipher the mercury vortex mm. but the shapes are aerodynamically possible mm. so there is knowledge which is available but we need to dig deeper mm. yeah technology and technological advancements are always a reflection of nature Right. like cameras are a, re- a reflection of the human eye. eye uh in so many ways planes are a reflection of birds completely but can we make a deeper reflection that truly yes. is like a bird uh you know maybe another viman could have been uh, flown using megafauna like mm-hmm. we had that flying dinosaur i think it was called aero something uh pterodactyls yeah pterodactyls yeah i think so um pteranodon uh, <laughs> Aerosaurus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, I just remember because an epi is a is very fond of dinosaurs. Yeah, same. I'm sure you are as well. I I, I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh and I'm sure that you know there must have been some overlap in that 60,000 70,000 year time period right. where there was megafauna present which are large animals present yeah. at the same time yeah. as uh, when our humanity yeah. probably. In fact again that brings me to another um, mythical creature sure. called a sharab. Okay. Okay. There's a creature called a sharab who's supposed to be sort of this um, chimeric being, and which has multiple animals' limbs or structures. You know, the face is uh, like that of a lion, the tail is like that of a peacock, or stuff like that. The limbs are different and all. But that is, I mean, beyond the description, what it is supposed to do, it it is the Carl of all animals. So it is supposed to be the ultimate predator in the food chain. Mm. So who could this be? Scientifically, it has to be a dinosaur, right? Mm. Who can even eat lions and tigers? There's only one animal who could have done that scientifically, historically. It's the dinosaurs. So the description might be different. In fact, you know, so I travel for work, and I um, was once in Cambodia at Angkor Wat, and again, fascinating place. It's the biggest religious temple complex in the world. It's bigger than the Vatican. and this is a 11th century hindu temple which is now buddhist because the country is buddhist but this was a 11th century hindu temple which was the biggest religious complex in the world at that time and even today okay and there you know the in one of the temples uh, i think that's angkor thom uh, there is a carving uh, on one of the doorways of a dinosaur of a stegosaurus so who would have known a stegosaurus you know even if it was done later maybe 14th century 15th century even till then the dinosaurs were not discovered right so the discovery of dinosaurs and all the different varieties of dinosaurs happened much much later in the 19th century 20th century but there is a clear cut carving of a stegosaurus on a temple wall what do you make of it mm. so there has to be some megafauna which survived mm.